actually streaming live um, from the church this morning, and it's great to be in the midst of 10 people. Um, we cannot wait for the day that all of you get to return, and we're so looking forward to that. Um, it's a very special day today. We get to introduce um, John Noggle and his wife, Lindsay, and his daughter, Peyton. So we're going to do that later in our service, but will you join us in some worship this morning?
My name is Eddie E. Stepp, and I have the privilege of serving the Kansas City District Church of the Nazarene. And it is an honor and a privilege to be here this morning 
It is a little different these days in our sanctuaries and in our churches. This morning here at Fort Osage, there are exactly 10 people who are here to uh, help lead worship this morning. But across the seats of this sanctuary, there are cardboard pictures and cutouts reminding us of the congregation, the pictures of the congregation, images of the congregation, and stuffed animals in many of the chairs reminding us of the wonderful children of this church. I want to thank you for your faithfulness in supporting this church, for your commitment and loyalty, especially over the months of this interim. And I have been so blessed and grateful for the commitment and the leadership of your church board. It's been a privilege to walk with them through this, uh, what became a long journey, but we're so glad at the destination God has brought us to. Also want to express my appreciation to Dr. Charles Christian, who served for many months as the interim pastor here, served faithfully, and I know that you, as well as I, appreciate his ministry and are grateful for him. Well, all of the Kansas City District rejoices with you in God's providence this day. And it's my privilege this morning to install your new pastor. It's, it, it is a little different with only 10 people here, but even from the very beginning of worship this morning, there's been a sense that the presence of God is here among us. And I trust this morning, wherever you are joining us from, that you as well sense the presence of God. Pastor John, would you please come and join me this morning? This is Pastor John Noble, our new pastor at Independence Fort Osage, Church of the Nazarene. Pastor John, I have a charge for you this morning. I'm going to begin with an Old Testament reading and then a New Testament reading that I have selected for you for this occasion. The Old Testament reading comes to us from the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it from the right or from the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And this passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 5. These are the words of Jesus. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. This congregation, after a season of prayerful discernment, has called you to serve as pastor. And since you have accepted this new trust and responsibility, I give you this charge. I charge you, first of all, to do the work of a shepherd, to preach the word, to feed the flock, to care for this congregation, to give them direction and, when needed, correction, to faithfully administer the sacraments, to give yourself to prayer and to the study of God's word. And I'll tell you, John, you're starting this work of the shepherd in a very unusual circumstance. You can tell by looking at this sanctuary this morning that these are unusual days, and yet you have been called here to serve as shepherd of this congregation in this very unique situation. Usually a pastor would get in a car and visit members of the congregation, but you're gonna to have to do that through other means for a few weeks. But you'll be able to do that. Uh, first of all, you're young enough to know how to do that. <laughs> we rejoice in that and celebrate that. We're grateful that you are here as shepherd. I also charge you to be an equipper. You are the pastor of this church, but you are not the only minister in this church. In fact, every member of this congregation needs to be involved in ministry. This COVID-19 situation has caused pastors to do a couple of pretty substantial pivots in ministry. The first pivot was to move to digitalization, to put services like this on the internet, uh, to begin to minister digitally and electronically. 
But there's a second pivot that's taking place these days from digitalization to mobilization as pastors mobilize the church to be involved in ministry. You are the pastor, but we need you to equip and to empower the entire congregation for works of service and for ministry. I charge you to remember the mission field. The church is not the mission field. Uh, the church is the, the mission provider, the missionaries that uh, are to be active in the community, which is the mission field. One of the positives of this crisis has been that it has driven the church out of the church walls and into the community so that it's easier now for us to recognize our responsibility to care for our neighbors and to pray for one another. I challenge you and charge you to be a good steward of this opportunity. You are the sixth pastor to serve Fort Osage. Some have come before you, some will come after you, but this is your watch. This is your opportunity. And I charge you to take full advantage of this opportunity. Serve well. And finally, I charge you to keep your family as your first congregation. Lindsay and Peyton are your first responsibility. Now the church, any church, will take as much as you're willing to give and will welcome more. So you'll need to develop boundaries. You'll need to make your family your priority. Spend time with them. Invest in them first. They are God's first gift to you. In Ephesians chapter 4, Paul tells the Ephesian church and tells all of us that pastors are God's gift to the church. God's given the church many gifts, and one of those gifts is the gift of pastor. God has given this church the gift of you as pastor, and he has given you the gift of this church as a place to serve. It works very well when the church recognizes that you are God's gift to them and when you recognize that the church is God's gift to you. When that gets backwards, then it gets very complicated. When you begin to feel that you are God's gift to the church, oh, usually my phone starts ringing about that time. Or when a church begins to think that they are God's gift to you. You are God's gift to them. They are God's gift to you for you to recognize and for you to celebrate. It is a privilege to welcome you to this congregation. I know you're going to serve well. I'm going to invite now the congregation as they're scattered all around in their living rooms and in their homes. If they have a copy of this installation liturgy that's been made available, on the uh, internet, on their webpage, I'm going to invite them to read along with us. And uh, I will read the sections indicated by District Superintendent. Pastor, you only have two words to say in this responsive reading. We suspect you'll be saying many, many more words <laughs> in the weeks and months and years to come. Pastor John, will you accept this charge to be the spiritual leader of this flock? I will. Having committed yourself to this work, I charge you to care alike for the young and the old, strong and weak, rich and poor. By your words and by your life, proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, and by all means, make Christ-like disciples in the nations. Congregation, do you affirm that through the Holy Spirit, this church and this pastor have been brought together according to the will of God? This we do believe and affirm. Will you who witness this new beginning, covenant to support and uphold Pastor John in this ministry, will you pray for your pastor and his family, encourage and support him as he seeks to lead you in the mission of the church? This we covenant to do, that the cause of Christ's church on earth might advance. Will you gladly welcome, embrace, and encourage his family, this we will joyfully do. Since you have willingly and prayerfully called Reverend John Noggle to work among you, I charge you to willingly and prayerfully support, cooperate, and work together with him in the name of Jesus Christ 
whom you both serve. It's my privilege now to pray a prayer blessing for Pastor John and for his family, his wife Lindsay and their daughter Peyton, and I'm going to invite them to come and join us for this time of prayer. This is Pastor John and his wife Lindsay and their daughter Peyton. What a beautiful family. It's a joy to welcome them and to ask God's blessing upon them. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for this morning, for your goodness to us and for your faithfulness. We have prayed for and looked forward to this day for many months now. And we're so glad that you and your providence have provided this opportunity for us. What a strange and interesting time it is to begin to pastor a new church. And so I pray, first of all, that you would bless John and his family, that you would watch over them. But I also give thanks to them for their willingness to be obedient to you in such a strange and interesting time, for their willingness to leave their home, their comfort zone, their family, and to travel these many miles in obedience to you to begin a, a new adventure of faith and of grace. So I pray your blessing upon them. We believe, Lord, that you have been opening doors in advance in preparation for them, the ability for them to sell their home in Ohio, to, to find a home here. For the way you have provided each step of the way, we give you thanks, we give you praise. We ask that your hand would be upon John's ministry here. Bless him, Lord, as he prepares messages. May those messages strike deep in his heart in preparation for him to share those messages with this congregation. Bless his times of prayer. Bless him as he provides pastoral care, especially in this season when pastoral care has to be provided in new, creative, and innovative ways. Help him to be creative and imaginative in the way that he serves this congregation and ministers to them. Bless his family, Lord. Thank you for Lindsay, for the gifts that she brings, for her passion, for her desire. And I pray that you would bless her relationships that are developed here among the people of this congregation and in this community. May those relationships be life-giving. May they be joyful. Bless Peyton, Lord. Bless her as she develops relationships with other children in this church. May she find that she has dozens of grandparents in this congregation. May her love for this congregation and their love for her grow immensely. Lord, you know how dear PKs are to my heart, pastor's kids. And I pray that 20 or 30 years from now, as Peyton looks back on this congregation, that it will bring warmth to her heart and a smile to her lips as she remembers the joy and the love that she experienced here in this church. Bless her and every child in this church, I pray. Thank you for the future that you have provided for us, Lord. And now I pray that you would give us the courage and the faith to lean into that future and to continue to achieve the mission that you have given us to make Christ-like disciples in the nations. This we pray in the strong name of Jesus Christ. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. Welcome, Pastor. Let's just imagine there are 500 people. Not a problem. <laughs> welcome, Lindsay. Welcome, Peyton. God bless Thank you. Thank you. And they got to be here today. <laughs> Uh, we had been doing this uh, back at uh, my previous church in Bucyrus, and uh, it, for me, there was quarantine, but it still felt somewhat normal because I was at church every week, both services, and so I got that feel, but uh, I definitely understand, though, too, for those of you who haven't been able to come out, uh, you know, our hearts, you know, we're so ready to meet every one of you, to get to know you, and uh, I've been asked numerous times if I was ready for this week, I'm like, oh, yes and no, that I knew at some point I would be a senior pastor, and God had been preparing us for that. Never in my life would I have dreamed that there was this global pandemic going on, and everything shut down, and okay, now how is this going to look? Because I'm going to a church, and I probably have met half of the people, and so some of you, I literally don't know yet, uh, but we're excited for that opportunity. Uh, also, just thinking about everything that goes on in this, and preparing, you know, a first sermon to come to a church, and, you know, to lead into the next day, is just like, well... Hey, this is, again, as Pastor said, very strange times. Uh, 
trying to figure out what a good sermon would be and typically may talk about change and vision, but yet with not everybody here, is that appropriate? And, uh, and how long is this going to be? Are we going to be able to meet in a couple of weeks or a couple of months and just really seeing what the uh, CDC is going to put out? And uh, it's an adventure, but uh, we know that uh, you know, for such a time as this that we are called and we are very excited to be your pastor and pastor's wife. And I know Peyton uh, is excited too. And I know through the process, uh, a lot of confirmations have come along the way. And uh, uh, we just look forward to some great days and hope that once things kind of get back to normal, if you will, uh, we'll be able to rejoice and see what God has in store for us. Uh, and I, I must admit, uh, and I, I haven't told Lindsay this one yet either, uh, it has a little bit bit more of a struggle really thinking of what to present this week and she had asked me may have been monday or tuesday as we're finishing packing the house okay what is it you're going to preach about this week what's your message and i kind of tell her what i was leaving she's like oh that sounds good i'm like yeah i do too and then throughout later a couple days later i'm like wow i really can't get past that first thought like it's almost like okay that that seems blocked and so as we're driving the miles from ohio to missouri i probably came up about three out of four really good ideas but couldn't get past the idea stage I'm like man like i'm just hitting a block and sunday's coming pretty quick and well i haven't slept much so we'll see how this goes and so today's message that it kind of hit me a little more yesterday is that why that block was there was because i hadn't lived through this entire week yet and i really felt like god wanted me to share some of this process with uh, the congregation that's here and online as well and just kind of where our hearts have been what we've been through but how god has shown himself faithful and uh, it's just been amazing to see in this process with uh, covid 19 new ways of doing things that god is still faithful god has his hand on everything and uh, he puts the pieces together when they need to be together and there is no mistake in the timing there's no mistake in the placement that God knew all of this was going to happen, prepared the way, and that we know that God has something very special in store for this church, for us, and for this district. And so, well, I'll just blow this. Moving across the country is a lot of fun, you know? <laughs> Trying to get all this stuff together, and I've shared uh, with numerous people, and even Pastor Eddie today, like, you know, I really felt like we experienced the miracle of Jesus being the 5,000. Because but they are fish and loaves are multiplying over and over, and it's like every time we go to a different room, stuff keeps multiplying. Like, where did this come from? Like, we're running out of boxes, we're making extra trips, and can we get rid of stuff? And then it gets to a point, well, they're coming in a couple of days, so if we need to get rid of it, we'll get rid of it in Kansas City, which we probably won't, but we know we should. <laughs> but then a moving company, so we're trusting movers that we don't know to handle our stuff, to pack it right on the truck and get it here and unload it and pray to God that we packed it right and that our dishes aren't broken. Uh, we'll find out. We haven't got that far yet. And then driving both our vehicles, one with Peyton in a car seat, the other one with our very hyperactive dog, Molly, uh, which they did both pretty well uh, for the most part. And uh, it's part of our timing that we got some delays there and actually drove through the night, which actually worked out well because both daughter and dog slept most of the way. So that worked out very nicely. Um, but also in this process, the excitement of coming here, but also knowing, saying goodbye to family. We had a, a home in Ohio and the church family we had. And like we hadn't had church face to face in seven weeks. And how do we get that closure and being able to touch base with people? And, uh, it's just a, a lot to deal with in a very short period of time and from packing boxes to making connections to saying goodbye and all the details that come together. And of course, all of that, let's throw, throw COVID-19 into the whole mix. Praise God, what a time to be alive, right? But what's been amazing in this process is really seeing how God's hand has been on, on our lives, on your guys' lives, and just how everything's been worked out and even from the beginning uh back in february uh, the phone call i had with pastor eddie talking about hey uh, we have a church that may may be a good fit would you like to be able to do a conversation well, i'm always open to a conversation let's have it and then the the zoom interview went well or skype whatever we used at that time uh that seems very popular now after this but uh but then the interview with the board and then the meet and greet uh 
I mean, we were at uh, such a peace about the whole process and knew God was in it. And uh, I know for us, the selling point, at least for this daddy, was uh, seeing how well Peyton was received and playing with other kids. And of course, we get down to the meet and greet and we're in the receiving line and she's got her snacks and she's hanging on to mommy and daddy to make sure she, you know, that snack doesn't go away. Uh, but then to be able to play with some of the other kids and didn't necessarily need to have mommy and daddy by the whole time just running around the fellowship hall and uh, for us that was a very touching moment to know hey this is going to be okay our daughter's going to have friends here she's going to be well taken care of and that was uh, a very confirming moment for us in this process and then we uh, get the church vote which was uh, obviously very overwhelming uh, the, the response we had and uh, if it wasn't as clear that God wanted us here then he definitely made it at that point and so we're like okay uh, looks like we're going to Fort Osage and uh, it's been exciting uh, to make that step knowing that all the years of ministry has led up to this point uh, but again this is uh, really just a starting point for us and what God has in store and uh, so we're excited here but then all the other details selling a house during COVID-19. Well, wouldn't you know, uh, we decided to do the for sale by owner approach because, well, let's face it, we wanted to keep as much money as possible from the sale. And we're like, well, if it, nothing happens, by the time we go, then we'll turn it over. But let's see if we can get any, anything out. So it was a Monday, I put the a sign in the yard, got a call that night. They went through the house Wednesday, put in an offer, and went through the whole process of accepted, inspections went well, the appraisal came back great, and above all, we had to do nothing to the house to make it ready, so now we are just waiting for a closing date. So essentially, we sold the house in three days. During COVID-19. Like, well, praise God, if that's not a confirmation, then I don't know what is that, you know, who would want to buy or sell during this time? Well, it doesn't matter, because God's hands on it, so it will happen. So we're very excited about that, so hopefully by the end of May, uh, that will be uh, all settled. And then we also, we're thinking of ways of a chance to say goodbye, because Lindsay and I, we, and that, you know, we've had deep connections with people, and uh, Nazarenes, I don't care where you are, we're all family. And we just wanted that opportunity to uh, say goodbye properly to uh, people that not only we have invested in, but families that have invested in us. And... Um, I had the idea that, you know, what if we did a campfire at our house where we're outside, people can scatter through the yard, we have a big enough yard, and so we have people sign up for 15-minute increments to come by. Some took a few liberties with that, but that's okay. <laughs> but it was, it was awesome to be able to have that kind of closure and the response of people coming out, and uh, we did our best to social distance, but some of them, you know, they got a hug, and so, you know what? I've been fine for six weeks, you've been fine for six weeks, let's hug. So it was uh, some good closure for us. Uh, and the other thing that really excited me was just how many people commented how good it was just to get outside and be able to talk and socialize with people they know. Like, even though there were social distancing, but just to get out, stand around the fire, it, it was a beautiful thing. And I really think once things open up, uh, our churches are going to be a lot more packed than people think. I know some people may prefer to stay home, but I think that's just the excitement of getting around the body of Christ, getting around other people to build each other up. It, it just does something for our spirit. It does something for our mind, and it is a very healthy thing. And uh, that God, he created us for community. That it is wonderful we have uh, Facebook and Zoom and all the digital things we can do, but uh, nothing can really fully replace a personal touch and those connections. Uh, and, and and the cards and the letters, uh, texts, phone calls we've got was such uh, a healing part of us in this process. And even for those uh, at Fort Osage, many of you have reached out and welcomed us. And we are so blessed to be here and looking forward to exciting times. But even in the midst of all that went well, the enemy is still going to take an opportunity to attack. And so there were some mental battles that took place over the last few weeks here, especially this week. Uh, and first of all, I'd say the, the enemy, it seems so, he likes to attack when we're isolated, vulnerable, and tired. Well, COVID-19, a lot of us have been rather isolated. And for Lindsay and I's uh, uh, situation, a little more vulnerable emotionally, having to say goodbye to uh, 
family that is back home and a church and be able to come here after those years. And so there's an emotional drain there. It's just tired from packing boxes and moving the boxes around and just all the work that goes into getting the house ready to move. And so uh, there's, there's been some lack of sleep, just making sure things are ready for the movers, making sure the house is clean for the buyers who are going to be taking the house and driving across the country. It's a physically exhausting uh, journey. And it, in this whole process, it's, I think it's neat how that God's word refreshes us as well. And I think today is good too. I know we got 10 in here, but even online, but uh, in Hebrews, you know, do not forsake gathering with one another. Again, that social connection to be able to be with one another. It is a healing part and an encouragement. And James encourages us to confess our sins to one another and to pray for one another so you will be healed. And the amount of people that have said they've been praying for us in this transition, we have felt your prayers, we appreciate them, uh, keep them coming. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done, but uh, we are so glad to have a family of God that loves us and supports us. But I think one of the biggest things uh, that the Bible speaks of is rest. And something we look forward to, but even though we may not have had much physical rest, uh, the spiritual peace that has come with that has been uh, just just amazing. That uh, that Jesus promises that to come all those who are wearied and burdened, and I will give you rest. And that is a promise that we have relied on in this process. And I know, don't get me wrong, I'm looking forward to taking a long day to sleep here in a couple <laughs> days. I'm not going to lie, looking forward to that. But. In this whole process of moving, just the peace of God that has been with us, the just that rest, uh, we know that this is the right thing at the right time. And even though we may not, uh, there, there's some emotional things there. We just know and trust God that everything will be blessed. But even just getting here, yeah, this, this, so the emotional exhaustion of the goodbyes I've mentioned, physically exhausted from packing, cleaning, traveling. And then and with that, you just kind of barely have time to really take in what's going on. Like going out on the out the back door on the deck is like, oh, this is the last time I'm going to do this. This is the last time I'm going to close the door to the youth room or my office. This is the last time we're going to do whatever. And it's just a blur of a week. It's just sometimes it just hits you and you just start crying. It's like, what are you crying for? Like, we planted those flowers. We're not going to do that. <laughs> Weird stuff like that. It's, it's, it's all hits you at once. Uh, but it's good. It's it's a healing thing. And it's okay to be sad and grieve about things that are left behind. But we also can have joy uh, coming forward. And I know there were some from View Cyrus that are watching today. Yes, we love you guys. We'll not forget you. Thank you for all you've done for us. But for those here at Fort Osage, we are, believe me, we are very glad to be here. Glad to call you our family and looking forward there to other things and so we get back to this okay had an attack we're on the rebound then we make the drive out get a half hour down the road and uh lindsay's driving her suv i'm driving a car and she's like i'm hearing a squeaking noise <laughs> of course you are sure why not so we pull off we're grabbing lindy's and i listen hey, yeah there's a squeak there but nothing's dripping i'm like well what we'll deal there with like we don't have the choice of going back and having someone look at the car like we got to get to independence because the movers are going to have our stuff at the house in the morning so we got to make it happen so we start driving and by a couple hours later um th there's a light that come on it might be the check engine light of course it is <laughs> why not uh is it making any noise other noises can you well i don't know like well pray over it and we got to push through it it's got to happen like, so this week, if you know any good mechanics, let me know because we have a check engine light and a rattling car now. So, uh, so we made it here. We're, it was great, and uh, we drop off at the hotel. Molly, our dog, and then Lindsay and Peyton are all there, kind of hanging out and resting up. I go to the house to help with the movers and get things squared away there. Probably about 15 minutes after I get there, I get a call from Lindsay in a frantic mode that. Um, uh, uh, how it all happened, of course, I don't know, but something with Molly's food bowl and Peyton picking it up and uh, Molly nipped at her and put a couple of uh, gashes in her hand and it's bleeding everywhere. And so, of course, 
don't know what's going on. She's like, you need to get here. We need to go to urgent care, ER or something. I'm like, I don't know what to do because they're asked, I need to be here to tell them where to put stuff. Like, so we're just trying to piece it out together. And unfortunately, we found urgent care. The bite wasn't quite as bad. No stitches were required. So should heal quickly. So we're thankful for that. But uh, I just got to think, man, it's like if there wasn't enough stuff to try to derail us from coming here, it was like, <laughs> man, we just had to press through. It's like, you know, just all the stuff that went through that. And, and then this whole thing, like our moving process got delayed a day with that and boxes. So everything got pushed back. So it's, it's been kind of a grueling week if you look at that, but God has been faithful to get us here, to help us get through those things, and uh, and it really got me thinking here, too, that uh, in this whole process of God's hand, the enemy attacks, but how God responds, and most of the time, he responds with his body. The body of believers that reach out to one another at times that we may not realize it, but we may send a text, a phone call, a letter that gets to someone at just the right time that encourages them. I mentioned we had many calls, texts, and stuff that, hey, we're praying for you guys. Hope all goes well. And uh, But there were some very timely ones that uh, came at very good times. Uh, one in particular, uh, we were driving and uh, uh, through the night and... We were tired, and I know we were kind of both at the wall. Lindsay was just very tired at one point, and we just needed to pull over and rest. And she rested for a little bit, and then she gets a call from her brother Brian. And uh, that call though, just did wonders, lifted her spirit. He prayed with her and over us. And uh, that phone call uh, just came at the right time when we needed it. Uh, throughout the nights, uh, getting stuff packing and everything before the movers come. We get a text from one of our uh, youth sponsors. Her name is Tara. And uh, scripture was Isaiah 41 10. This fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's powerful as I can think of that time that message came. Huh. We were hitting a deadline, had to get so much done. You know, we're up late, not knowing when we'd get to bed or if we would. And that message comes that I will strengthen you. And he did. And we made it through, we made it here. <laughs> but so many like that, that helped us get here in a week that was very tiring and very stressful. But at the same time, wanting to get here and knowing God's hand was on it, that nothing was gonna hinder it and hinder his plan. And then along the way too, that just the scripture reminders, and uh, one of the last uh, messages I gave with the youth group uh, came from John 14, 26. It says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. That the power of the Word and how much we allow the Word to sink into us, to pour over and allow God to speak to us, that throughout the week, uh, just reflecting on different scripture, it's amazing what God's word can do because it's not just words on a page. It is the word of life and it gives life. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the scriptures that came along, Philippians 4, 3, 4 13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, 1 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of, of power, love, and self control, or, or some translations, a sound mind. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your cares or anxieties on him because he cares for you. And probably the big, a big one that came uh, for me uh, was out of Matthew 6, and I'll go ahead and read the passage here, but uh, verses 25 through 34, and it's a section called Do Not Worry. And uh, I was going to read here the words of Jesus. It says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, 
or about your body and what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And in the grand scheme of things, from a human perspective, if there was stuff to worry about, we, we, we had every excuse to worry about stuff this week, moving and all the things that came at us. But to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, to put the first, change our perspective. Because when challenges come in life, we have a choice of how we respond. Like, I can't control what happens with COVID-19. I can't happen what controls with an SUV when an engine light comes on. I can't control a lot of things. But what I can't control is how I respond to it. And I can choose to be in faith and to trust God, or I can choose to fear and worry and allow everything to eat away at me and to be anxious. And truth be told, there were times this week that I felt that anxiousness that, like, Oh my goodness, like the movers are coming, we gotta get ready. Like just that 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 timeline that crunches on you, then have to take a step back for a moment and breathe and spend time to pray and allow God to speak to me and say, hey, it's gonna be okay. And even this whole process of like, selling the house is that wondering what things with the appraiser and just being reminded that God's like, Have I not led you? Is this not where I'm calling you to go? Do you think I would not handle this for you? And let it go. And so throughout the way is that just the that big picture thing is God's called us here. We'll get there. And anything that comes up, he's going to help us handle and overcome. And he's done so very well. And I want to close with a couple of things here that uh, uh, and, and I, uh, <clears throat> I actually kind of wrote these earlier this morning. And I know uh, Pastor Eddie had mentioned about feeling the presence of God here, and uh, it definitely hit me during the second song, uh, saying about God's goodness and his faithfulness, because those are actually the first two things I wrote down, uh, things we learned this week uh, about God, and so I heard that song, it was just yet another confirmation of God, like, like uh, this, we didn't coordinate between what songs were being sang today and a message or any of that, and I just trusted uh, the worship team there, and it's just amazing how God knits everything together. But first of all, we learn God is good. His hand on this whole process, how he's taking care of us, and that how we were able to leave and to come here, that it, it's just been good. And yes, trials have come up, but you know, he has overcome and has helped us to overcome all of those. God is also faithful. That he does not go back on his promises and that when his word is pressed, it, it, it holds itself up even more. That when things come to a challenge, that there has been enough scripture that Lindsay and I have learned over the years and held, held on to that we were able to go back to and it helped us get back through that time. And just the rejoicing that comes with that, that God has proven himself faithful and faithful. He's not let us down and he has not forsaken us. God sees the big picture. As I said earlier, God knew this whole COVID-19 thing was going to happen, and he knew we were going to come here at this time, and churches would still be online, and, and to go through that, and, you know, there'll be things we have to work through. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of churches that this has not happened before, 
You know, we have not been to any schooling that has taught us how to lead a church during a global pandemic. That was not any of the classes that I've had anywhere ever. So this is all new for everybody from your fa pastor to the district to the general church is that we're just trying to figure this out all together and uh, to be gracious with one another. But uh, God sees the big picture that he knew that this would happen and that uh, this is happening at the right time in the right place. And even though we may not see all the pieces, we can trust that he knows what he's doing. We also know that God cares about the details of our life. That just the littlest things along the way and different uh, gifts we were even given, just little reminders that have touched our hearts along the way. And uh, even with stuff getting the house uh, that we're renting here uh, in Independence that uh, we didn't see the house. It was just a picture we had and hey, this may be a good house. So we went with it, saw it yesterday. And, yeah, it's a good house, this will actually work. And, uh, that was a big face step that, okay, we're going to live somewhere based on a picture. We'll see what happens. And, uh, but God cared about those, those details and that whole process and has taken care of us. And above all, God is in control. Amen. That in everything we've experienced, and I know as far as preparing a message, I didn't want to do anything about getting through a coronavirus type of message because you've probably heard a lot of them. And you're probably like, okay, let's hear something different than that. Um, which is the same reason why I've stopped watching the news. Like, I already know what it is, so no reason to watch it. I'll get my update somewhere, and oh, okay, that's the, new, that's the new announcement. But I have no reason to watch news because it's all the same thing repeated over and over again. But I think with that is being able to turn from what the world says that is built to put fear into us, to turn to the Word of God and to see these churches online and be able to connect with one another that God's word brings life and encouragement and power and love. And then this whole process that, uh, by that I'm not saying that we're doing our, trying to do our part too and following the guidelines and, and staying healthy, but at the same time is that I can also say we don't live our life in fear. That we know God is in control and whatever happens that uh, we know his hands on it and uh, that we can trust him no matter what comes our way. And I won't go through it now, but there are plenty of scriptures and stories throughout the Bible of uh, people who've had it much worse than what we're dealing with right now. And it's all just a matter of perspective. And I know that there's a whole lot of thoughts going out there, ideas and what may be going on or what's not going on. But the main thing is God is in control. Nothing has surprised him and everything is done in his timing. And we know the enemy attacks and he will continue to do so. But in these moments as we are online, we'll be coming out with some announcements, things of how we can connect with you guys uh, throughout the week. I know Pastor Eddie had mentioned at the beginning about you know, being able to go and visit with people, knock on doors. Uh, we're not going to be able to do that for a while, but we'll get creative. And uh, but we want to be able to meet everybody and uh, kind of see you know what we want to do together. And I think I mentioned uh, when we came out uh, for the meet and greet time that uh, you know this isn't for me. I don't want to be the guy that comes in and, and does everything. That I truly want this to be a partnership, and that this is not my church; it's our church. And really, it's God's church that he brought this group together for a time as this, and that uh, just the blessing that we feel back and forth, that we are a family, and uh, there'll be times we will rejoice together, we will mourn together, and believe it or not, we'll actually argue. But <laughs> we will get through it, and, and God's love, and his blessing, and we just know that God's goodness and his faithfulness will continue uh, to last, and well, I, we are just very excited to be here, and we just look forward to what God's going to do, and again, look forward to meeting every one of you, and obviously, too, that hopefully in this message and sharing that there was something that was an encouragement to you as well, and uh, obviously, I don't know what you're going through, because a lot of you I haven't met yet, so I couldn't. But just know that God is good, and he is faithful, and he will see you through the struggles you're going through, whether it's related to 
coronavirus or whether it's uh, related to health issues, financial issues, whatever it may be, God is in control and he will show himself faithful. And he cares about the details of your life. That he doesn't just sit afar off and just let things go, but he is an intimate God. A God that wants that deep of a relationship with you that we can call on him at any point. And as I uh, pray here, I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up and close us in a song. And uh, I'd ask you to join me online in prayer as well. And those of you still here, uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning and this time we could gather uh, those of us here in, in the sanctuary and even those online. And just as we celebrate this uh, new beginning uh, of coming together here at Fort Osage, Lord, and we pray that we take this time to rejoice, even though it may feel different than what we'd have expected. We know that you are in it, and we know that you are leading, and we can trust you with each step. And I pray, Lord, for those out there who have needs, and some of them... Uh, are very pressing right now. Lord, I just pray your peace that passes all understanding come upon them right now. I pray that they will sense your presence and hear your voice to know that they are loved, to know that you care about them. And Lord, to know that even though we may not be able to see or know what's going on, that we can trust you with everything because you've already been there. And we know, Lord, that you've proven yourself faithful over and over and over again and that we can trust you no matter what comes our way. And in the weeks and months ahead, Lord, as we make preparations to gather back together in the sanctuary again, may you give us wisdom and, and how to lead that way and how to come together. And when that time comes, Lord, May it just be a great day of rejoicing and, and celebration to know that you have great things in store, uh, not just for this church, but for this community and for this district, Lord. We love you and we thank you. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
thank you for joining us this morning and in the coming weeks um, you know we will continue to live stream until we can meet together we'll do our best to uh, keep improving that quality as we go along and thanks for hanging on with us while we uh, got through this first Sunday of doing that and we miss you all we love you all and we hope that you have a great week